if I have potential to do something and I'm not taking action on that, I just feel like it's such a waste because I think everybody has limitless potential to create whatever they want. That was coach, content creator, and best-selling author, Scott Allen. Scott's made it his mission to, in his words, help people create the life they want to own. How does he do that exactly? With the extraordinary series of self-help books he's written and by sharing his life story. In this episode, Scott delves into how he shifted toward a life he wanted to live and not the default that he had started to settle into. With a remarkable 35 self-help books under his belt, Scott's goal now is to empower everyone to take just one step and see where the unexpected, the unplanned, and the uncharted may lead. Welcome to The Breakout, a show about smashing through life's little boxes and forging your own path. I'm Dr. Carrie Ulrich. And I'm Kelly Gunther. Carrie and I are people and change experts, best friends, and business partners. We've spent more than 25 years helping employees and leaders change. With love and a lot of laughs, we're here to empower you to live life on your terms. Our methods may seem a bit unconventional, but trust us, they will change your life. Let's be real for a second. We know change can sometimes be scary. Heck, it even scares us. But staying the same can be even scarier. On The Breakout, we prove that you can escape expectations. And best of all, we show you how. All right, Scott, we're so excited that you're here. In a couple of sentences, tell us what you're breaking away from and what you help others break out of. What I'm breaking away from, I'm always breaking away from the way that other people are doing things, if that makes sense. You know, I just want to be doing something that's on the other side of the spectrum. And if somebody says, hey, that sounds like a really crazy idea. You sure you should be doing it? That usually means I'm on the right track. Yeah. Then you're like, absolutely. That's what I should be doing. What are you talking about? You just said it was a crazy idea and most people don't do it. And speaking of what most people don't do, most people don't have, unless you're Stephen King, 35 books. And so you've put out so many books. Tell me more about writing all these books. It's a lot to write a book and 35 is, is so impressive. Yeah. I started writing back in 2008 or 2009 and I'd already been living in Japan. I've been in Japan for 25 years or so. So I um, have always wanted to write a book, probably since I was junior high school when I started writing. And I have always been a fiction author for the most part. But when I started to write again, I think I gave it up for about 20 years. And when I got back into it, it's just always one of those things where if you'd stop me on the street and say, hey, what's your dream? I would have said, oh, to be an author. Like that would have just been no matter what I was doing at the time. Yeah. That would have been it. And I realized after telling people that story again and again, and it just really bothered me that I wasn't actually doing it. It's like, you know, being a writer, an author, and living that dream was something that I was going to do someday. And it just always became one of those someday things on my checklist. Eventually, it bothered me so much, I just said, that's it. You know, and I sat down that day and just started penning out a nonfiction self-help book. The reason I went that route is because I'd read so many of those books I'd done so much of the training and I think I had a lot of knowledge that I just wanted to share instead of keeping it to myself. Our coach at the time asked me, what are you going to do with all this information that you have and all these books you're reading? And I said, well, I'm going to build a great life. And he goes, just for yourself. And I think what he was applying is you should get out there and teach everybody else how to do it as well. So that was a wake up call. So yeah, I got busy and it probably took me a few years to write my first book. It took about three or four years of my just uh, working on content, doing some procrastinating, shelving things, bringing them back. And then eventually I ended up self-publishing because at the time when I was ready, Amazon had just rolled out their publishing platform back in 2012, 2013. And I was like, I just want to get my book out there with my name on it and see what happens. That was it. You live in Japan, but you're originally from a small town in Canada. Mm -hmm. How did you get, I mean, we get up by a plane most likely to Japan, but how did you get from the small town in Canada to, to publishing in Japan and staying there for now over 20 years? I was born in Halifax, Nova Scotia. And when I finished college, there weren't a lot of jobs around. So my friend was living out in BC on Vancouver Island in Victoria. And he said, Hey, come out here, lots of jobs. So I said, okay, sounds great. And I just jumped on a plane and went out west 
and just hit the pavement, found some work, stayed there for about six or seven years. And I were, my background, by the way, at the time was as an electrical engineer. So I did that for quite a while. And uh, yeah, so I uh, don't have a background in teaching English, which is what I was doing in Japan. So I eventually got to the point where it's like, I was going through a period in my life where I had to make some changes. I did a lot of partying. I had to go into addiction recovery that lasted a couple of years. And then when I got my head on straight or when I got my mind clear, I picked up Tony Robbins book, Awaken the Giant Within one day. And one of, his, the, one of the chapters in the book was about how to create a compelling future. So after I started getting sober and things started to make sense to me, and I started learning and that's when I started reading self-help books. And um, every time I did, I just learned something new. I was like, wow, like I didn't realize all this stuff was out here. You know, I thought everything I learned was in a bar. And so I started learning all this stuff, you know. <laughs> but yeah, when I read this book, within a week, I had transformed my little apartment into like like I had a, a vision board on every wall in my room and this was before internet. So I went to the library, take out books on how to learn Thai and Vietnamese because after writing down my goals, I just somehow came up with this idea and it became an obsession that I was going to travel around the world. And once I had that idea in my head, it just became the driver for everything. So I just decided I'm going to do this thing a year from now because Tony told me that you've got to have a compelling future. You've got to do this, this, and this. And I thought, I'm going to do this stuff, right? And when I made that decision, something in me just went to work. Like, I mean, it was just like, I was still working at the time, you know, running a job and, and working with a lot of like, you know, high voltage electrical equipment and blowing stuff up in my day work, my day job. But, <laughs> but in the morning at night, I was working on my dream. And um, that's how I got to Japan. It's like my roommate brought home the paper one day. And um, I don't read the newspaper, never have, right? And this particular day, I just happened to pick it up. I opened up the newspaper and right there was this advertisement. It said, teach English in Japan, apply now. I thought, well, oh great idea. Gosh. Yeah, I, you know, I'm going that way anyway. Um, and my plan, by the way, was just to go to Thailand, hang out for a while and backpack around. And I was going to start there. And I didn't have a plan beyond that. But I thought this teaching English thing could, you know, well, let's see what happens. And I, And that's just the way I roll. Like, it's like, I'll just take action on something, see what happens. And next thing I knew, three weeks later, I was sitting in, in a hotel in downtown Vancouver having a dinner with a Japanese businessman who owned these schools in Japan and they were bringing people over to teach business English. So they hired me and this was like maybe back in, I don't know, like October of 1997 and we weren't leaving until March. So I had like five or six months to put time in, but uh, I just took that time to prepare for everything. I loved it. I just, I just loved like going into a culture that I know nothing about. Wow. Scott, what was that moment where then all of a sudden you're like, you know what? I explode things during the day, but I'm going to kind of blow up my life a little bit too. Like what was that, mm. that moment where you're like, oof, this is, I'm going to make this dramatic change. Yeah. So I remember I was sitting in a coffee shop with my sponsor slash mentor at the time, and I was probably about a year into recovery and doing well. It took me a long time to get to that stage, you know, because he didn't think I was going to make it. But he said to me when he goes, now that life is happening for you, he's like, what are you going to do with it? And I never really thought about yeah. that before. Beyond that, I had, I was like, well, I don't know, hang out with you guys. And he's like, no, you're going right. to do something, <laughs> you know, you got to do more than that. You know, you've got this gift. So what are you going to do? And so I actually just started to think about it every day. And then it was almost like when I started thinking about it, you know, if you believe in like the power of the universe and the energy is like, I think I was attracting like everything that I wasn't really sure that I wanted yet. I was attracting it. And then when I had the idea that, well, you know, I picked up Tony's book, started going through that. And then I wrote down my goals. So that, you know, just set a fire inside of me. So now I had like goals on paper, which I never had before, because I never believed that I was worthy of having goals or that they would even come true. And so it's just kind of like this combination of things where it's like, I went from one step to another to another, but a lot of it was really the mindset. Like, I think I had just, you know, like going through recovery, talking to people and having them direct me in that way, just, it really created a different kind of brain that I'd never had before. You know, like I had a new mindset and yeah. I was like, I've got to do something with this life. Like I didn't come this far just to come this far. And more importantly, I don't want to go back to where I came from because that wasn't going anywhere either. We'll get back to the interview after this quick break. On the breakout, Carrie and I celebrate big changes and small shifts. Only about 10% of us are really self-aware, but 90% of us think we are. 
Without self-awareness, change is tough. And if you don't know what box you're in, you can't break out of it. That's where we come in. We are coaches and consultants that help you dig into change. We've spent our lives breaking through expectations and we've devoted our careers to showing people how to do the same. We're here to help you demolish the story you've built around yourself to reveal the true you. Then the real fun begins. And by fun, we mean helping you figure out your why and taking action to forge a fresh path. Connect with us at abracigroup.com. I love that the person said to you that you have a gift, right? And when I look at all the work that you do, Scott, it seems to me that you're really trying to help everyone kind of uncover their gift, that they can transform and you can have kind of, like you said, a second brain, a different life. And so maybe tell us a little bit more on why all your books focus on that transformation. Yeah, I think that was a big part of my, I call it an obsession, but I think it really was. I still don't think I've written my best book. So I'm always looking to create, you know, the material that's going to help people to get unstuck and take action. And so that's why, Leo, one of my books is on how to overcome procrastination. And the material is actually not just based off of other material that I read, part of it, but most of it is really on personal experience, right? So one of my books is on how to overcome your negative behavior, overcoming challenges like negative thinking, overthinking, procrastination, as I mentioned, and just all those things that uh, usually hold us back and drag us down, ultimately defeating us. And when I see somebody who has potential and just seeing it myself, like if I have potential to do something and I'm not taking action on that, I just feel like it's such a waste because I think everybody has that limitless potential to create whatever they want. And this is part of the compelling future that Tony talked about in the book, which to this day, I still like I still read that chapter every week. Like I always pick up something different in it, but that's, that's really what drives me is like, I want to sure I want to create that for myself, but I also want to teach other people uh, the possibilities. And when you work with people and you see that they're actually get, making that progress, then mm-hmm. for me, like I start to feel like, oh, okay, like this is what I was meant to do is to help people with this transformation. I love that, Scott. How do you approach the people in, in the transformation and through your books, how do you approach them? Because you know, it, like you you mentioned, you don't just like go into recovery the first day and go, oh my God, this is so mm. great. Thanks. Yeah. So the approach I have to that is that every day is a new day. You have to treat it like a new day because yesterday, even if you had a big win, you know, that's not today's win, right? And I'm not saying like you should disregard what happened yesterday, but like yesterday you won the award. Today, you've got to work on the next award or you've got to be working on something new. So, and the reason I mentioned that is because uh, everybody has, has made mistakes in the past. They've had failures in the past. And what holds most of us back is we're holding on to all that stuff. You know, oh, well, it didn't work for me back then. Why should it work for me today? It's like, look, that was yesterday. And this is today. So uh, and I've had to train myself to do this as well, because my thinking was always was like that. It's like, well, you know, I never made money in the past. Why should I make money today? We create these stories for ourselves, you know, and we believe them. Right. So that's where I, whenever I'm working with somebody, if they say, yeah, you know, I, I failed at that thing you asked me to do last week. And I'm like, OK, well, that was last week. What are you doing today, right? And we just start from there. I wake up every day and the sun is shining or it's not shining, it doesn't matter. It's a new day. As long as I wake up, the world is still here. We got one more chance to make it. I love that. I was just talking to someone the other day too and they said, well, it's probably just what I'm doing in my head. I was like, probably. Isn't Mm -hmm. that like 95% of the stuff that's on us is it's in our head. I can't do it. That failed before. I can never do it again. I didn't, I, that book didn't sell well. Therefore, no other book's going to sell well. Oh my God. Like we catastrophize in our head so much and overthink. And I think that's why your books are probably so popular too, because we're really struggling with how do I not overthink or how do I not get into that, that rut of it didn't work before. So I love what you said, Scott, about it's a new day. And I think Kelly, I was thinking, what's the Quote, is it by Goethe about the Mm -hmm. universe conspiring? At the moment of commitment, the universe conspires to assist. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that's so much of what you talked about is how everything does come together when you make the decision and you're clear in your intention. So really, really impressive work that you've done, Scott. Yeah, that's a really interesting quote. I've heard that before. And that's so true because 
when I made the decision to, let's just say, come to Japan, for example, or even before that, I made the decision to just, I was going to travel. And I, I think from the moment I made that decision, it was like a year that I had. But the thing is, I made the decision and that was it. There was no changing it. I didn't go back and second guess it. And I didn't have any self doubt around it. It was just like, I'm just doing this thing. And I think my message to people is like, make a decision. And the only thing you need to do is take the next step. You don't have to know the outcome because then, then we start to think about the outcome. Well, if it doesn't work out and what if, but you know, just like, what's the next step, whatever it is you decide to do, just make a decision to take action on something. If you want to make a hundred thousand dollars next year, well, just make a list of the different ways you can do it. Like you got to do something and then just go to the next thing and the next thing. So I try to keep things simple because if we don't, we, we start to get so all this confusion and chaos happens inside our own heads, like you said. What I like about what Scott said and what I like about people who are in recovery, there is something about yesterday was yesterday. And like when I've heard people who maybe are addicted to something, they're like, well, I, I wasn't addicted yesterday. Like I didn't fall off the wagon yesterday, but I could today. And like, you know, many of you know how much I love RuPaul and listen to Drag Race and I'll listen to him sometimes and he'll say, someone will say like, oh, good for you for being sober or something like that. And he's like, well, today could be the day I'm not. Like I've heard him say, and he's not saying it to be flippant. He's saying it to realize the power that things have over you to be like, well, today might be the day. And so it's giving this day respect. And I did love what Scott said around that was yesterday. The award was yesterday. The mistake was yesterday. And so it's that balance. It was one of the first interviews where I felt like there's a healthy balance of like an emotion being shared and a fact being offered as well. Mm. Like it wasn't, you know, he spoke rather matter of factly, but it wasn't in a way that was like authoritative. He's not looking to set an impressive goal from the standpoint of who's going to receive the content. It's just that I want to get the content out there. He was just really dialed in. I just felt it was really powerful. If I did my math, which I'm not great in math, Scott, so just putting that out there. Did you start writing in 2008, did you say? Yeah, it was around 2007, 2008. I spent two years studying the publishing industry and reading all kinds of books about writing because um, I felt like I would become a better writer if I did that. And it was also a way for me to procrastinate on writing. So, <laughs> yeah. And then you wrote a book about procrastination. So how fitting that is. Yeah. And after reading 20 books on how to write a book, I thought, now I'm really ready. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow. So 2007, 2008, that's roughly 16 years that you've been actively writing. A voracious reader, clearly. So that's 35 books in 16 years. And that's, I, I mean... We just finished one and I mean, I can't imagine 35 or 34 more in the, in the offing. So, you know, what was it that you felt that you could add that was maybe missing from the self-help book genre? Yeah, I think um, with the exception of a few books, a lot of books I was reading were not as actionable as I wanted them to be, or they didn't have specific frameworks. Um, there was a lot of information, but it just felt like a lot of reading. I'm very specific on the framework that I'm teaching to people as well in the book. And I wanted to create books that were both interesting and, you know, you could read the book and go, okay, I know what to do now because Scott told me like I have to do steps one, two, and three, and four. And, you know, and if I do this, then I'm going to get some result. Like something's going to happen if I just take action towards that. So that was kind of the idea that I had. And, you know, I spent a lot of time researching the market, looking at other books. And uh, sometimes I would just come up with a title for something like uh, a unique title and go, yeah, that could be a good book. And then I would create content for it, you know. So I didn't do things the traditional way of like going into the market, researching what sells and what's not selling and all this stuff. I only write the kind of books that I want to. I don't write the kind of books that I think will sell in the market. I just want to write the books that I feel are just, I don't know, burning inside of me. You know, I've just got to get these things out. And I've written quite a few books, but uh, I had a couple of years where I didn't write anything, probably 2020 as well, like the COVID years, which we all have our stories about that. I almost gave up the business uh, during that year, but I made up for it. I think just coming out of that was when I wrote the procrastination book. And so 
I think the challenge is that I'm always working on new content and then I'm always trying to do other things as well. But the thing is, I just love creating. And more than that, I love connecting with people, communicating and sharing my story and just hoping that if I can just say one thing that's going to help somebody to get up and do something, pursue their dream, I feel like it's all been worth it. Well, you're talking about taking action and frameworks, which is our love language, Scott. So we're all in. I think the best books are the ones that come from the passion that you have inside of you. And when you have maybe struggled with something or have an appreciation for something, it's important to get that message out. So do you have a typical audience that kind of flocks to your content? What kind of feedback are you getting on your work overall based on, you know, the books that you've written? I don't know if I had done this intentionally, but my audience tends to be a wide audience. And and by the way, I've coached like hundreds of people through the writing process. So when we're talking about what the target audience is, you know, the rule is like your book's not for everybody, right? And I still will stick to that. However, for the most part, like my books can be for everybody, but you have to want to learn that thing. So, I mean, I have a book on, like we just go back to do the hard things first on procrastination. Well, I do have a book on that, but if you love procrastinating and you want to stick with that habit, that book's not for you. I think it's important to kind of come into that realization knowing that at some point in life, maybe the procrastination is no longer working for me. I took a job where that's just not accepted Mm -hmm. or I want to, you know, get a different philosophy of how to maybe do my work. So you're meeting people where you're at, which I think is important. And you mentioned too, that you've coached people on the writing process, but you've also focused so much on books. Are you looking to break out of writing books and and do other things to make your content and your message go even wider? Mm, Great question. Yes, absolutely. So You're right. I think up to about last year, I was just working on the books and eventually I got tired of just doing books, to be honest with you, right? So um, I started working on the courses because actually, to be honest, people are asking me for the courses, right? And the the platform's launching uh, really soon, right? And then back in February, March of this year, it's like, well, I've always wanted to be a public speaker, but I'm afraid of getting in front of a camera. And I've done interviews in the past, but I was always kind of like on the edge, a little bit nervous. So I started doing interviews and the more I did, the better I got at speaking. So I was like, okay, well, this is going great. Now I'm, I'm working on these new skills, you know, what's next? So doing the videos, doing interviews, trying to appear more on social media, just doing all these things that were not just the writer in a cabin, you know, head down, putting words down on paper. That works for a while. But after a while, even I got tired of it, right? It's like, there's enough content out there. Now it's time to actually, you know, take the frameworks, take the content and teach the frameworks to people doing workshops and seminars and um, eventually doing bigger stages. Like that was kind of like one of my bigger goals is to be in front of 20, 30, 50,000 people. So I'm thinking, wow, wouldn't that be an interesting uh, goal to shoot for? I want to level up to the next best version of myself. And the thing is too, like if I can do that, then hopefully like other people will model what I'm doing because I model other people. And I think that's how we learn and that's how we, we can scale up and become better. Like if you want to achieve anything, look at somebody who's already done it, model what they're doing, and you may not get the, the same exact result, but something's going to happen from that. Wouldn't it be amazing if we all just bet on ourselves and had more confidence and you know what? I can't go crush that. I can go do that. So bet on yourself. And then also he didn't get mired down in the, uh uh-oh, I shouldn't move away. Oh, I need to stay here for whatever Mm -hmm. bullshit reason. He didn't get mired down in that. He bet on himself. He didn't get mired down in what you and I talk about all the time, Kelly, is the expectations. Well, I should stay in Canada because my family says X, Y, and Z. I should continue to be an electrical engineer because that's what I studied. I should. No. So he bet on himself and he shed baggage that could have weighed him down. And now look at him. And if we could do that for anyone listening, bet on yourself, shed your baggage, it's a free life, it's authentic, and it can be beautiful. It's not about the outcome per se. It's about right. the next step that you take. So I appreciate that he, even now, after having write, written 35 books, he could be the ultimate to say, you know what, just write the write the book. But he thinks about the message and what he wants to communicate, and um, it's one step at a time. Mm-hmm. 
What would you say is the sort of next challenge for you, being the goal-oriented individual that you are? Is there a, a next challenge that you've identified for yourself? It's a challenge and it's probably also a dream. So I was talking to my partner the other day about this and uh, would love to create the lifestyle where I'm traveling and doing stage talks, keynote speeches, those kinds of things like that would be perfect. That would be like the next stage. So I have a vision board in my office. And so I still create vision boards, by the way. They're great to have. And I do meditation. So when I'm immersed in my zone, these are the things that I think about. And of course, because one of my biggest fears was always public speaking. So I figure, let's just get that out of the way. But the second thing is, uh, what a great way to connect with people. You know, I just, to feel the energy in the room. And like, it doesn't have to be 50,000 people. It might be 50 or 500. But to be able to do that would be amazing. And yes, I have uh, bigger plans for the publishing business. So... I've got some really good people in my corner, though, that I work with. And, uh, you know, they're always keeping me in check, right? So that's why you always want to have people advocating for you as much as you're advocating for everyone. We all need advocates as well. There's so much that you shared that I think is just so powerful. And you sort of alluded to this, but I want to give you another opportunity. You know, if you have one minute with someone who's stuck and they're looking to break out, Scott, what would you tell them? The one thing that holds a lot of people back again is lack of clarity, right? I would say get clear on what it is that you really want. And that just means picking up a pen, putting it to paper, just writing down one thing that you want. And then it doesn't have to be like the thing. It just has to be one thing, you know, and then just decide what's the next uh, action step that you can take and just actually make a list of those steps, right? Because uh, that becomes your, your task list and then just do one thing a day or do one thing a week, whatever it is. You have to just take that next step. And from there, eventually you will, you will get what you want. I do believe that that builds momentum and momentum is the key. And eventually that might become determination and determination might become something else, which I love to call obsession. I can definitely see the momentum in your trajectory as you've grown as an individual, as a writer, as a communicator even because I think the power of podcasts is that you'll meet someone where they're maybe having a struggle. And, and maybe your episode, Scott, is the episode where they're like, oh my God, just write one thing down on a piece of paper, one thing. That's easy. And that will be maybe the, the way that their life changes. So humbled to know you, Scott, and to have you join us. And again, thank you so much for joining us at Midnight Time in, in Japan. Really appreciate you taking the time to share your story and for being vulnerable with us. Oh, well, it's been fantastic. Thanks for having me on the show. Yes. Thank you, Scott. We'll be in the audience when you come to Southern California. Exactly. So we'll be in the audience cheering you on. I'll save a couple of tickets for you. That was Scott Allen, author, coach, and action taker. And this is The Breakout. Kelly and I are in the business of breaking free, being brave, and living boldly. We're here to inspire you to be the badass you are meant to be. Coaching and consulting is kind of our thing, and we're really good at it. Connect with us at abracigroup.com. And don't forget to subscribe to The Breakout so you never miss a new episode. Make sure you're following us on Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook, and please leave us a review. Reviews help more people find the show, connect with us, and live a more authentic life. I'm Kelly Gunther. And I'm Dr. Carrie Ulrich. See you next time. 